Hi my Pingus! Today I want to show you my latest mug. It is a mini Umgebindehaus. There is no translation in English. I used an existing building as reference and it's really tiny and so cute and I love this so much. And if the owner is okay with it, I'm going to show you uh, the real um, building on Instagram sometime. Here I'm building some steps to get into the house because it is on a little hillside and the foundation I tried to let it look like it is out of sandstone. It is pretty common in the Oberlausitz to use sandstone as base for the house. It can also be a granite or a Azalt. And for the parts you don't see, I use just the colors I had. In the past, it was very common to build those houses on the in the east of uh, Saxony and um, north of the Czech Republic, and it's a mixed um, building structure using a German framework with kind of a lock building um, from the Czech Republic. The Blockstube um, was built out of locks and was <laughs> sorry was usually um, on the ground floor. And outside of the Blockstube there were typical stud work with arches, you will see later on in this video. And framework was used in the upper level, on the upper levels of the house. So here you can see I'm already building up the floor, the wooden floor, of course. To build an Umgebinder house is a real old technique. I don't know uh, when the uh, well when the first. Umgebinde house was built, but um, the house my parents live in was built in, seven in the 1780s, so it's very old. Here I'm building the terrace with some different colored tiles. And the blue walls symbolize the kind of log cabin style of the Blockstube. And there's a nice rustic kitchen with a huge stove. And of course a nice fridge with enough room for of course vegan food. <laughs> are usually very small, I guess because of the cold winters, in order to keep it warm inside. Let's build some furniture, for example, a floor lamp, a couch in yellow to give it a little contrast to the blue. <music> Coffee table, of course the residents are Ethel's too. a flat screen. Let's put it inside. And let's go on with the wall. Now I'm building the stat work outside with the arches. And because I don't have enough black arches, I just use those invert slopes. And there are older Umge Umgebinder houses that look similar to this. They don't have the arches. Next, I'm building the wardrobe. 
This is going to be uh, next to uh, the uh, entrance with a little seat and a lamp. And this is the newer staircase I'm very proud of. It's not that fragile, but it looks really good and it fits perfectly in this tiny house to save as much space as possible. And here's the dining table with a lollipop-like tablecloth. <laughs> and some flowers, and of course some fruit. And here are the chairs, or at, <laughs> at least one chair of uh, three. And here's going to be the dining area. And next I'm building the annex, and I'm pretty sure it is not the same age as the main building because it is pretty uncommon to um, build framework on the ground floor. So I guess it is younger and more modern. So I decided to put a huge window on the backside of the annex. putting some tiles up on the walls so I can easily lift off the roof. This is going to be the frame of the roof. At first it's very fragile but if it's ready um, with the walls in between, it's quite secure. This is going to be the floor. This is going to be the bathroom. I choose some light grey tiles for it. And this is going to be the bedroom slash working space. And if you put this frame up on the ground floor, it's pretty secure. This is the first gable. Here's the shower, there's a little sideboard with a lamp, a toilet of course, and a sink. Here is an accent wall. I wanted that it looked like it was made of different colors of wood. Here's the bed. Here's the desk. With a computer, of course. A lamp. And a squishy! Sadly, I don't own any sets of The Simpsons. But I really, really hope sometimes I can afford it. And the squishies, I do own several of this, of, of them. I got from several Lego stores. 
so I'm pretty happy about it. This is the large cable. The large cable. And the short cable. Ceiling lamp. And let's go on with the landscape. I wanted it to look pretty wild. Or a bit wild. Because I think if uh, the garden is too clean, it doesn't really fit those old houses. And as I mentioned before, it's a little hillside this house is on. So as you can see, I use different colors of green and different textures to get the wild look. Here's a tree. It's a bit fragile, but I love the look. It's, uh, it looks really bushy. <laughs> Here's a little barbecue. A garden chair. And a garden table. With newspaper and a glass and a can of soda. And another little bushy tree. Or bushy bush. Last but not least, the roof. It's also a bit different um, than the uh, original building. I mean my reference building. Um, because it's not white underneath and the roof overhang is not that thick. Um, but I choose to do this thick roof overhang to cover the gables to make it look more clean. I choose a different colored roof because I think it fits more to an old house. And I do not have enough tiles of the same color to build the roof. <laughs>
plates in the middle of the roofs and there they're going, going to be uh, hanging on the uh, building as you can see here I hope and I have to mention the first roof I put the uh, plate inside a bit too high I needed to be lower I uh, did it the right way uh, uh, when you see the pictures later on so it's ready and the residents can move in it's a little couple because it's not enough space for more people so what do you think of my little baby maybe I'm going to show this on some exhibitions next year if you're new to my channel subscribe please leave thumbs up and I'll see you next time bye